you didn't say the magic word. It's been a minute since we last caught up, hasn't it? I've been busy plugging away at the game, getting it all to a point where the mechanics and systems are release ready. Making a game is hard. This is hard! Finishing one is next level hard. No! This is impossible! This is especially true when building for consoles and having it pass certification. So I've let the devlogs drop slightly in priority so I can get some of these things done. This episode is a quick update to show the dressing room feature, which I've added to the game to give some personality and customization. There are now several secret tiles in the game which will not show up a UI prompt to action on it, keeping them very secret. Rather, there will be a very faint audio cue when the player lands on it to signify that this is indeed a secret tile. If you action on this secret tile, you will unlock the costume and be able to switch to it anytime you like. I'd always planned on having these easter eggs where you could unlock the costumes, but I didn't put any thought into having a dedicated menu or screen to change them. So I rolled my d20 and landed a 17. This told me I had to suck it up. Oh, suck it up, princess. Add in a dedicated option screen and change some costumes. This screen lets the player get a nice close look at Bouncy Boy and his new bling. It also lets you rotate around to check it from other angles that you don't really see in the game. The way that I implemented this feature is quite cool actually. Going back to the previous devlogs where I talk about async and await, this whole mechanic is driven by async code. The first UI button adds an async listener to show the dressing room. This loads an additive scene and switches cameras so it can keep your gameplay running exactly where you are when it exits the dressing room. Once that scene is loaded, it will then load the costume assets via Unity's addressable assets. And while they are loading, there's a little loading image displayed. It's fairly quick here, but uh, once more assets are added in, it will become more meaningful. Here are the skins and costumes to choose from. You can see the panels here are a modified version of the scroll view UI object. So I'm able to use them using directional inputs such as the gamepad or the WASD keys. The dress up boy here will demonstrate the new costumes and skins. And once the player exits the dressing room, an event is fired off to let the in-game Bouncy Boy know to load up the respective costume and skin. So remember, this is all called from that one UI button, started via an async function. While that async function is still awaiting the closure of the dressing room. Once the scene has unloaded, the last thing that this async function does is revert the game state and input state back to whatever it was before this button was pressed and then the game will just continue exactly how it was before uh, going into the dressing room. Because I decided to add in the ability to change skins, I figured this would be a great opportunity to let the community have some creative input to the game. So I'm running this little comp where you get to design a skin for Bouncy Boy, and the top three designs will actually make it into the game. Today the competition begins. The winners will also get their names in the credits because bragging rights. I'll link the instructions in the comments where you can download a template and create your skin. Here are some examples on screen of what you could be done. Some design advice? Just keep it simple. Bouncy Boy only takes up a very small part of the screen, so small details won't be readable in-game. Colours, gradients and patterns are perfect. I totally encourage everyone to give it a crack. Well that's about it for now and uh, good luck with the competitions and I'll see you all next time.